I want to talk a little bit about how molecules create life. And this is not a biologist's perspective, it's a chemist's perspective, and specifically a biochemist's perspective. Uh, biochemistry as a discipline, it's a core discipline for the life sciences. And I choose today to talk about biochemistry and it's important for the life sciences. Biochemistry is also extremely important for a lot of uh, technological um, disciplines not related to life sciences. Uh, but I'm not ignoring them really, but just today since I only have seven minutes for my presentation. But you should know that biochemistry is much broader than what I'm trying to convey today. But for the life sciences, biochemistry is a core discipline, and for that, that reason, really important. New biochemical methodologies, they enable breakthroughs in life science research. And we've seen lots of these over the years. And, and when biochemists get their act together and come up with new methodologies, things will take off in biology or in other areas. And we've seen that with PCR as a technique. We've seen that with extra crystallography as a technique and with various other techniques. So some people regard biochemistry as being really crucial for methodology development. And that's true, but biochemistry is a discipline in itself. But this is one of the contributions that we make to life science research. Uh, there is an intimate relationship between fundamental and applied research. And sometimes there is an argument whether people are doing fundamental research or applied research. For me, there is um, there's a, a very short distance between one and the other. And we often go in between. So I often do fundamental research, but I also do applied research. And I don't see the point in arguing whether we're doing one or the other, because we, most of us do both. Uh, Uppsala University has a really good track record in, in integration of research, education and innovation in biochemistry. And we have a very good track record for starting new companies in Uppsala. And if you know anything about the biotech industry in Uppsala, you will know that many of these are founded by uh, biochemists coming from Uppsala University. We also have two Nobel Prizes awarded to Uppsala biochemists. Uh, I think my colleagues may want to argue that and they say that is only one. Uh, I, there are two of them. Um, Thierry Svedberg got the first one, but he was a physical chemist in those days. Had it been today, he would have been called a biochemist. He was doing biochemical research, but biochemistry in Uppsala came in the 40s, and that's where Arne Tisserius got his Nobel Prize. So I would claim that we have two Nobel Prize winners in uh, Uppsala. Let's talk a little bit about the molecules of life. Uh, you all know that Small organic molecules are really important for life. We have large organic molecules like carbohydrates, proteins, lipids, nucleic acids. All, all of these are really essential for life. This doesn't constitute life. We need a little bit of water. We need some other ions and stuff. You know, chemistry all over. Uh, these are the molecules of life. Uh, if we look at a cell, it's you can just see it as sort of a bag of molecules, but uh, often we think of it as a dilute solution, but it's really a very crowded solution. And there's a limited number of um, molecules that will fit into the cell, and depending on the cell type, the constitution of the cell will differ. Uh, but it's not until these molecules start interacting with each other that it becomes really interesting and where you can gain a function. So just a single molecule will e never have a function. A molecule that interacts with another molecule can have some sort of a function. And if you look at what's happening in a cell or in an organism, we have a multitude of uh, molecules that do interact. And this is what creates um, function. So um, moving from this to trying to understand the system, as a biochemist, we often do very reductionist work. We work with very simple system because this is what is easy to handle, is what's easy to interpret, like enzyme substrates. So this is an example of an enzyme that needs to bind a substrate, but it also has cofactors and co-substrates. Uh, we have multi-component systems like ribosomes. Again, molecules that interact suddenly become machines. Uh, we have replication complexes that also function as machines inside cells. Um, and then we have all the higher order systems. The principles are exactly the same. It's just a matter of how complex system are you looking at and how complex system can you actually handle. So if you want to understand a bio, uh, biomolecular system, you need to have some sort of basic chemical principles to describe it. And that works fine. The basic chemi chemical uh, systems um, or theories can be worked out and uh, discussed for simple systems or simplified systems. 
But if you want to work with um, reductionist approaches, you will never be able to capture the complexity, the dynamics, and the non-linearities that um, really have to be applied if you want to understand a biological system. So biochemical research requires advanced theories and experiments. You always need to have multiple experimental approaches. And today, we also re have to rely on computer-based modeling. So computers are an integral part of what we're doing today. But without the critical thinking and creativity, we're not going to get anywhere. So this is, forgetting the human mind in what we're doing is uh, perhaps uh, the biggest mistake we can, we can make. So, what about life? Life is what we call an emergent property. A single molecule is not a su sufficient for life. A collection of molecules is not sufficient for life. Uh, but life can emerge from the right combination of molecules under certain conditions. So, the system must be open, it must be self-replicating. And you, in order to understand life, you need to understand all the molecules involved and the required conditions. So biochemists are essential for elucidating the molecular basis of life. And I think all of us doing uh, biochemical work uh, have this perspective of trying to understand what is actually going on in life. So just very quickly, what Uppsala biochemists do, we try to understand stereoselectivity of biological catalysts. We try to develop vaccines for autoimmune disorders. Uh, we want to build enzyme-based fuel cells for complete combustion. Uh, we want to analyze and understand the regulation of biological pathways, and we want to uh, discover drugs with optimal efficacy and safety. So this is what we're trying to do. Uh, we have protein crystallographers, we have people working with enzymology and directed evolution of enzyme function, we have people working with bioresource technology and enzyme nanotechnology, people focused on molecular recognition and enzymology and drug discovery. So this is a very broad overview of what's going on in our department in terms of biochemistry. Our visions for tomorrow is that Uppsala University is going to be internationally highly regarded for excellence in education, research and innovation in biochemistry. We want to perform research at an international top level. We want biochemists to be well integrated and implemented in all life science research at Uppsala University. And we also want to uh, collaborate with other scientific disciplines and of course we want to provide an education with broad competence for future careers in science and this is why you're here so I'd be happy to ask, uh, answer any questions later in the break and I'd like to move on to the next presentation which will be Professor Jonas Bergqvist